dear students today we will be studying about nutrition in animals so first of all we will study it in unicellular organism and then we will move to multicellular organism so the example of unicellular organism which we are taking here is of amoeba and multicellular organism will be the human being so let us start with nutrition in amoeba so amoeba is a unicellular organism which lives in water you all know it and as you have studied it in class 9th that whenever a food particle approaches towards amoeba amoeba starts expanding finger like projections towards it and these finger like projections are known as pseudopodia and then these pseudopodia engulf the encircle the food particle and forms the food vacuole this food vacuole is absorbed into the body of the amoeba and then due to the presence of cer certain hydrolytic enzymes the food present in this food uh, enzymes present in this food vacuole breaks up the food and the food is digested and assimilated into the body of the amoeba and later whatever waste material is there it is removed or expelled out from the body from the surface of the amoeba cell so the this whole diagram is from class 9th ncrt and you must be uh, recalling this the whole process of nutrition in amoeba so let us now move to the nutrition in human beings so the nutrition in human beings takes place in digestive system we all know it and our digestive system consists of the alimentary canal and different glands these glands produces enzymes and these enzymes helps in breaking down the complex food whatever we eat into the smaller molecules so that these smaller molecules can be easily absorbed digested and then later absorbed by our body so the main organs of the alimentary of our alimentary canal or the digestive system it includes mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine and anus and the main glands which form an important part of digestive system are the salivary glands which are present in our mouth gastric glands which are present in our stomach then liver liver is also a gland pancreas and intestinal glands so let us study about them in detail so what happens in the mouth as the digestion starts so it starts in the mouth very first step of digestion starts with the mouth so whatever food we take it is first of all converted into smaller particles by the action of our teeth and our teeth do it easily because the salivary glands present helps in secreting saliva which mixes up with the food particle and the food is easily broken down now this saliva contains an enzyme salivary amylase and this salivary amylase converts the complex starch whatever is present in our food into simple sugars this food is then passed through the esophagus into the stomach and that particular process is known as peristaltic movement that movement when food passes from the mouth into the stomach through the esophagus that is known as peristaltic movement and this you have studied in your earlier classes so the main thing which is happening in the mouth is the food is converting into simple sugar that is the starch is converting into simple sugar by the action of the enzyme which is salivary amylase which is present in saliva okay so the first component of the food which starts digesting in our mouth is carbohydrate no other component not 
proteins not even vitamins or any other component or nutrient starts its digestion in the mouth itself the only nutrient or the only component of the food that is carbohydrate whose digestion starts in our mouth now the food enters into the stomach so in the stomach the glands which are present they are known as gastric glands and these gastric glands secrete gastric juice a very important portion is this and this many questions are asked in the examination this year itself the uh, function of this pepsin hydrochloric acid and mucus was asked in the examination board examination in the form of flow chart so please listen to it very carefully so the in the stomach the food which enters is acted upon by the gastric juice and this gastric juice is released by gastric glands this gastric juice contains three types of things one is the enzyme pepsin another is hydrochloric acid and another thing which is present is mucus so what is the function of pepsin it breaks down proteins so the digestion of carbohydrates is start in our mouth while the digestion of the proteins is start from our stomach okay it should be clear now so the pepsin present in the gastric juice breaks down the proteins into smaller molecules simpler molecules of uh, proteins peptones and peptides now what is the function of hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid as you all know this is an acid and its work will be to make the medium acidic okay and it also helps in the action of pepsin so that pepsin can work properly hydrochloric acid is essential and the main wor work of hydrochloric acid is it makes up the medium of our stomach acidic in nature if we will eat more of the junk food or spicy food many times we suffer from the problem of acidity at that time more of the hydrochloric acid is released in our stomach and uh, what you take to relieve yourself from the acidity you take any of the antacid like you may take uh, eno you can take digen many antacids are present which you consume in the form of tablet or in the form of powder or in the form of liquid which helps you in relieving the acidity okay now what is the function of mucus this mucus protects the stomach walls from the action of the acid okay after all these activities after the activities of these three important things on to the food the food then passes into the small intestine so first of all it moves to the upper part of the small intestine it is known as duodenum here what happens the food is mixed with the secretion from the liver so the liver is also a gland largest gland present in our body and it secretes bile juice and pancreas also secretes certain juice that is known as pancreatic juice so in the small intestine the pancreatic juice and the bile juice mix with the food material and this pancreatic juice is coming from the pancreas and this bile juice comes from the liver so what are the individual functions of bile juice and pancreatic juice bile juice helps in breaking down the fatty fat component of the food whatever fats are present in the food they are broken down into smaller components smaller molecules by the action of the bile which is secreted from the liver okay so the very first digestion of the fats is start in the small intestine by the action of the bile juice which is secreted from the liver now comes the pancreatic juice so pancreatic juice contains the enzymes trypsin and lipase so trypsin it helps in breaking down the proteins further and lipase also breaks down the 
expands further into smaller components now from the upper part of the small intestine the food moves towards the lower part of the small intestine here the walls of the small intestine release intestinal juice and this intestinal juice is known as succus entericus now the enzymes of the intestinal juice whatever enzymes which are present in intestinal juice they convert carbohydrate into its simplest form that is glucose they convert fats into its simplest form that is fatty acids and glycerol and they also convert proteins into its simplest form that is amino acid so the total digestion of the food occurs in the small intestine small intestine is the site where the complete digestion of the food occurs with the help of the enzymes present in the intestinal juice and then later the completely digested food is absorbed by our body now how this food is absorbed by our body it is done by the villi these villi are the small finger like projections which are present on to the walls of the small intestine so these villi are supplied with the blood vessels and their work is to increase the surface area of absorption for of the digested food so now whatever food which was digested in the small intestine by the enzymes present in intestinal juice it is now absorbed by our body with the help of these villi finger like projections known as villi and this digested food is taken up by the blood and it is then transported to different parts of our body as per the requirement and whatever undigested food is left it is then passed into the large intestine in the large intestine water if any extra water is present in the undigested food it is reabsorbed by our body and whatever waste material is present it is then expelled out of our body through anus okay students so this completes the whole processing or working of our digestive system this diagram is also asked many times and it is asked uh, maybe the figure will be uh, will be there in your question paper and you will be asked to label certain parts or you may be asked to draw the diagram itself so you have to practice this figure and these things which are highlighted in the green portion they are very 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 important and you have to learn them up their function which enzyme is produced in which part of the digestive system and what is the function of each of those enzymes or any other material which helps in the digestion of the food this whole portion this whole slide is very important from the board point of view so please study it deeply and try to understand it properly so we will stop here students thank you very much